Don't believe this common myth about anxiety. It's not something you're stuck with forever. In fact, if you want to overcome social anxiety and build unshakable confidence, there's one powerful philosophy that can help Stoicism. This ancient wisdom has been used for centuries to face life's toughest challenges, including the fear and discomfort that come with social situations. Imagine walking into a room without worrying about what others think, without the knot of anxiety in your chest. It sounds freeing, right? Well, Stoicism gives you the tools to make that a reality. In this video, we're diving deep into how Stoicism can transform your approach to social anxiety. Whether it's learning how to focus only on what you can control, or cultivating present moment awareness to ground yourself in any situation, the Stoic mindset is a game changer. Stick with me, and by the end of this journey, You'll not only understand the core principles of Stoicism, but you'll also have practical steps to start applying them to your life immediately. Ready to unlock a new level of social confidence? Let's get started. Number 1. Understanding Stoicism and Social Anxiety Picture this. You're at a lively gathering with friends, laughter echoing around you. There's warmth in the air a gentle sense of belonging, but beneath that, a familiar tension starts creeping in. You begin to feel like you don't quite fit in, like every word you're about to say could somehow fall flat, met with awkward silence. You smile, you nod, but your mind is racing, caught in the endless loop of what-if questions. What if I say something stupid? What if they think I'm awkward? Social anxiety, right? It's something many of us have felt at some point, whether in casual social settings or in high-stakes situations like work meetings or public speaking. Now, imagine if this didn't control you anymore. Imagine being able to step into any situation, conversation or group setting with genuine confidence. Not the shaky kind of confidence that vanishes the moment things get tough, but a deep, unshakable calm that guides you through. It's not just a dream, this level of inner peace can be cultivated. And that's where Stoicism, an ancient philosophy, comes in. Though Stoicism may seem distant from modern life, its principles offer powerful insights into managing the anxieties that plague our social interactions. The Stoics, like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus, lived thousands of years ago but their understanding of human emotions and behavior still resonates today. They understood that anxiety is often rooted in the fear of things we can't control, the future, others' opinions, or unpredictable outcomes. But what if we could shift that perspective? What if we learned to focus only on what we can control? The power of Stoicism lies in this mindset shift and it's especially transformative when applied to social anxiety. By understanding what's within your control and what's not, you begin to free yourself from the grip of fear and worry. Think back for a moment. When was the last time you felt anxious in a social situation? Maybe it was a presentation at work or trying to make small talk with strangers. Remember how your mind spiraled, taking you out of the moment and pulling you into a maze of doubt. It's easy to feel trapped in that space, but the good news is that we have the tools to break free. Stoicism teaches that the present moment is the only thing we truly have control over, and by focusing on it, we can calm our anxious minds. This isn't just about suppressing emotions, but about mastering them, understanding where they come from, and deciding how much power they truly hold over you. Now let's dive deeper into how these stoic principles work in real life situations, how they can quiet the mental noise and bring you back to the present with confidence and peace of mind. Number two, the dichotomy of control. Focus on what you can control. The next time you find yourself in a social situation, whether it's a team meeting, a family dinner, or even a date, consider this, what can you control in that moment? 
The Stoics believed in what is known as the dichotomy of control, the idea that some things are within our control and others are not. Sounds simple, right? But think about how much of our anxiety comes from focusing on things we can't control. What others think of us, how a conversation might turn out, whether someone laughs at our joke or judges us for being quiet. All of these are external factors beyond our influence, yet they dominate our minds. Let me explain through a relatable example. Picture yourself preparing for an important meeting at work. You've got your notes, your presentation is ready, but still, there's a knot of anxiety in your stomach. What if you mess up? What if they don't like your ideas? What if someone asks a question you can't answer? Your thoughts spiral out of control, all centered on what others might think or say. This is exactly where Stoic philosophy can change everything. Instead of focusing on these external uncontrollable factors, the Stoics teach us to turn inward, to focus on what is within our power, our actions, our reactions, and our efforts. In that meeting, you can control how prepared you are. You can control your tone, your body language, and your level of engagement. But you can't control how others respond to you. It's freeing when you think about it. When you let go of the need to control others' opinions or reactions, you relieve yourself of a huge burden. It's not about apathy, but about shifting your energy toward things that truly matter, things you can influence. Think back to a time when you let fear of others' judgment hold you back. Maybe in school, when you didn't raise your hand to answer a question because you worried it might be wrong, or when you didn't approach someone you wanted to talk to fearing rejection. We've all been there. But now imagine how different things could have been if you'd embraced the stoic mindset. You would have focused on the courage it takes to speak up, not on the outcome of that action. Whether your answer was right or wrong, the fact that you tried would have been within your control. You can't control others' opinions, but you can control your bravery, your effort, and your willingness to step up. Does this idea make you curious about how much of your life has been shaped by worrying over things you can't control? Reflect on that the next time you're about to enter a social situation. Ask yourself, what do I actually have control over right now? Then, let go of the rest. The opinions of others, not your business, whether someone likes you, not within your power, but showing up as your best self, giving your honest effort, that's all on you. Number three, rational thinking, challenge. Anxious thoughts. Have you ever caught yourself in the middle of an anxious thought spiral? You know, the kind where you start with a small worry and before you know it, you're imagining worst-case scenarios that are so far from reality it's almost laughable. Stoicism offers a powerful tool to combat this kind of thinking rationality. It sounds straightforward, but when anxiety hits, rational thinking is often the first thing to go out the window. Here's where the Stoics shine. They believed in the importance of using reason to challenge negative and irrational thoughts. The next time your mind starts running wild, ask yourself, is this thought based on fact or is it just my anxiety talking? This simple question can help you regain control over your mind. Let's say you're about to meet someone new, maybe on a first date. Your mind is racing, what if they don't like me? What if I say something dumb? What if I'm awkward? These thoughts aren't based on any actual evidence. They're just anxious stories your mind is creating. Seneca, one of the great Stoic philosophers, had a brilliant way of addressing this. He once said, We suffer more in imagination than in reality. Let that sink in for a moment. Think of all the times you've worried endlessly about something, only for it to turn out completely fine, or even better than you expected. How much of your anxiety in hindsight was unnecessary? That's the power of rational thinking. 
It's about separating what's real from what's imagined and not letting the imagined take control of your emotions. Reflect for a moment. Remember a time when you feared something that never actually happened. Maybe you were terrified of giving a speech, thinking you'd forget all your words, but when the moment came, you did just fine. Maybe you dreaded going to a social event, convinced that you wouldn't fit in, only to end up having a great time. These moments are proof that our anxious minds often blow things out of proportion. Stoicism teaches us to ground ourselves in reality, to challenge the stories we tell ourselves with reason and logic. Now apply this to your daily life. The next time you're feeling anxious about a social situation, pause. Ask yourself, what evidence do I have that this fear is real? More often than not, you'll realize that your anxiety is creating a false narrative. It's not easy, but the more you practice this, the more you'll find yourself able to interrupt those negative thought patterns. And over time, they'll have less and less power over you. Doesn't that idea make you curious? Curious about how much your anxiety has been running the show without you even realizing it? What if you could take back control of your thoughts, start questioning them, and live with more peace and confidence? It's entirely possible, and the Stoics have given us the tools to make it happen. By grounding yourself in reason, by challenging your anxious thoughts with facts, you can begin to see social situations for what they really are, just moments to be experienced, not feared. What's the worst that could happen, really? And if it does, won't you still be okay? These are the kinds of questions Stoicism urges you to ask, bringing you back to a place of calm, rational thinking when anxiety tries to take over. Number four. Cultivating present moment. Awareness. Imagine being in a crowded room, perhaps at a work function or social event. There's a subtle buzz of conversation around you, the sound of laughter from different corners. You should be enjoying yourself, but your mind isn't there. It's somewhere else, worrying about how you'll come across, wondering if you're making a good impression, or replaying a comment you made earlier, trying to decide if it was well received or if you've embarrassed yourself. We've all been there, haven't we? It's the disconnect between where we physically are and where our mind takes us. This disconnect is often fueled by anxiety, and it's especially common in social situations where we feel judged or evaluated. But what if there was a way to pull yourself back from that mental spiral? To anchor yourself firmly in the present, so that instead of being lost in thoughts of how others perceive you, you're fully engaged in the moment itself. Stoicism offers us the antidote to this kind of wandering mind. At the core of Stoic philosophy is the idea of living in accordance with nature, which means aligning ourselves with the present moment, the only time we truly have any control over. The past is done and the future is uncertain. Yet we often let our minds dwell on these two places, pulling us out of the now. For the Stoics, this was seen as a misuse of our time and energy. Marcus Aurelius, one of Stoicism's most famous practitioners, frequently wrote in his meditations about the importance of being present. He said, confine yourself to the present. This simple statement holds profound wisdom. It's a reminder that the present moment is all we truly possess. And in the context of social anxiety, this mindset can be transformative. Instead of worrying about what might happen in a conversation or what someone else might think of you, focusing on the present allows you to simply be, to experience the moment as it unfolds. Think about a time when you were deeply immersed in an activity Maybe it was something creative, like painting or playing an instrument, or something physical, like going for a run. In those moments, you likely weren't thinking about what others thought of you. You weren't obsessing over potential mistakes or worrying about the past. You were just there, fully engaged in what you were doing. That's what present moment awareness feels like. Now, 
Imagine applying that same level of awareness to your social interactions. What if, instead of worrying about how you're coming across, you could focus entirely on the conversation itself? What if you could listen more deeply, respond more authentically, and be more present with the person in front of you? This shift in focus, from worrying about external judgments to fully immersing yourself in the present, can reduce anxiety and enhance the quality of your interactions. To cultivate this kind of present moment awareness, the Stoics often recommended a practice called prosoche, which is essentially mindfulness or attention to the present. When you find your mind drifting to anxious thoughts during a social event, gently bring it back to the present. Focus on the sensations around you, the sound of voices, the feel of your feet on the ground, the rhythm of your breath. This anchors you in the here and now, reminding you that the future you're worried about hasn't happened yet and the past is beyond your reach. All that matters is this moment, and in this moment, you are okay. Number 5. Building confidence through virtue. Confidence is something we all strive for, especially in social situations. But where does true confidence come from? Is it from external validation? how many compliments we receive or how others perceive us, the Stoics would argue otherwise. According to Stoicism, real confidence isn't dependent on external circumstances or other people's opinions. Instead, it's rooted in virtue. To the Stoics, virtue was the highest good and it was something that came from within. It wasn't about wealth, social status or even popularity. Virtue, in Stoic philosophy, is about living in accordance with reason and moral principles. It's about acting with wisdom, courage, justice and temperance, regardless of what's happening around you. And it's through cultivating these virtues that you can build unshakable confidence. Let's break this down in a way that's relatable. Think of a time when you did something you knew was the right thing to do, even though it was difficult. Maybe you stood up for someone being treated unfairly or you admitted to a mistake at work, knowing it could have negative consequences. In those moments, your actions weren't based on how others would perceive you, but on your internal sense of what was right. That's the kind of confidence the Stoics believed in, the kind that comes from integrity and moral strength, not from external validation. In social situations, we often seek approval from others. We want to be liked, to be seen as interesting, smart or funny. But this kind of approval is fleeting. It can vanish in an instant, leaving us feeling insecure or anxious. Stoicism teaches us to let go of the need for external validation and to focus instead on living virtuously. When you act with honesty, kindness and fairness, you don't need anyone else's approval You've already aligned yourself with your own values, and that's where real confidence comes from. Consider the Stoic idea of arete, which means excellence or virtue. The Stoics believed that if you live in accordance with virtue, you're already succeeding, regardless of the outcome. So, in a social context, whether or not someone likes you isn't the measure of your worth. What matters is whether you acted with kindness, listened attentively, and treated others with respect. If you did, then you've succeeded, no matter how the conversation went. Number 6. Mindfulness Practices for Grounding Yourself Mindfulness has become a bit of a buzzword in recent years, but for good reason. The practice of being fully present and aware in each moment has profound effects on mental health particularly when it comes to managing anxiety. In the context of social anxiety, mindfulness can help you break free from the cycle of overthinking and self-criticism that often accompanies social interactions. For the Stoics, mindfulness wasn't just a trendy practice, it was a way of life. They believed in the importance of being fully present in each moment, paying attention to what's happening both inside and outside of yourself. This kind of mindful awareness, known as prosoche in Stoicism, 
is key to staying grounded, especially in stressful social situations. When you're feeling anxious, your mind tends to race. You start imagining all the things that could go wrong, or you replay past interactions, analyzing every word you said. This kind of thinking pulls you out of the present moment and into a spiral of anxiety. Mindfulness helps you break that cycle by bringing your attention back to the here and now. Imagine you're at a party and you start to feel that familiar sense of social anxiety creeping in. Your mind begins to race. What if I say something awkward? What if no one talks to me? Before you know it, you're lost in your thoughts, no longer engaged in the present moment. But if you practice mindfulness, you can gently bring yourself back to the present. Focus on your breath, the sounds around you, the feel of your feet on the ground. By grounding yourself in the present, you can quiet the anxious thoughts and re-engage with the world around you. A simple mindfulness practice that the Stoics recommended is to focus on your breath. When you feel your anxiety rising, take a few deep breaths, paying attention to the sensation of the air moving in and out of your body. This not only calms your nervous system, but also brings your mind back to the present moment. You can do this anytime, anywhere, and it's a powerful tool for managing social anxiety. Reflect for a moment. Have you ever been so caught up in your thoughts that you missed out on what was happening around you? Maybe during a conversation, you were so focused on what you were going to say next that you didn't really listen to the other person. Or maybe you were so worried about how you were coming across that you couldn't fully enjoy the moment. Mindfulness helps you break free from that mental chatter and be fully present in your interactions. Doesn't that make you curious about how much of life you've missed out on because you were too caught up in your thoughts? Mindfulness offers a way to reclaim those moments, to be fully engaged with the people around you and the experiences you're having. And the more you practice it, the more natural it becomes. Number seven, reflecting on social interactions. Objectively, have you ever walked away from a conversation and immediately started picking apart everything you said? Maybe you replayed certain moments in your head, wondering if you came across as awkward or if you said the wrong thing. This kind of post-interaction analysis is common, especially for those who struggle with social anxiety. But here's the thing, most of the time, our self-criticism is far harsher than reality. Stoicism offers us a way to reflect on our social interactions more objectively. The Stoics believed in the importance of self-reflection, but not in a self-critical way. Instead of beating yourself up over perceived mistakes, Stoicism encourages you to look at your actions with a calm, rational mind. Did you act with integrity? Were you kind and respectful? If so, then there's no need to criticize yourself further. One technique the Stoics recommended is called the evening review. At the end of each day, they would reflect on their actions, asking themselves what they did well and what they could improve. This wasn't about self-judgment, but about learning and growth. You can apply this same practice to your social interactions. After a conversation, instead of immediately criticizing yourself, take a step back and reflect objectively. What went well? What could you do differently next time? This kind of reflection helps you grow without falling into the trap of self-criticism. Think back to a recent social interaction where you felt anxious. How did you react afterward? Did you criticize yourself or replay the conversation over and over? Now imagine approaching that same situation from a stoic perspective. Instead of letting your anxiety take over, you reflect calmly and rationally. You acknowledge any areas for improvement without beating yourself up. Doesn't that sound like a healthier way to grow? Number eight, embracing discomfort to overcome. Social fears. Growth often comes from discomfort. It's not easy to step outside of your comfort zone, but it's in those moments of challenge that we often learn the most. 
This is especially true when it comes to overcoming social anxiety. The Stoics believed that discomfort and challenges were opportunities for growth. Instead of avoiding discomfort, they encouraged people to face it head on. This idea can be applied directly to social anxiety. Social situations that make you feel anxious are uncomfortable, but they also offer a chance for growth. Each time you step into a social situation that challenges you, you're building resilience and becoming more comfortable with discomfort. Next time you find yourself feeling anxious in a social setting, try shifting your perspective. Instead of seeing it as something to be feared, see it as an opportunity to grow. Embrace the discomfort, knowing that each time you face your fears, you're becoming stronger and more resilient. Curious to see how this plays out in your own life? Test it out. Challenge yourself to embrace discomfort in social situations and see how it changes your perspective on anxiety. Number 9. Developing Resilience Through Stoic Wisdom Resilience is the ability to bounce back from challenges, to endure difficult situations without being overwhelmed by them. For those dealing with social anxiety, resilience is key. Social situations can feel daunting, but with resilience, you can face them without letting your anxiety take over. The Stoics were masters of resilience. They believed that we can't control what happens to us, but we can control how we respond. This mindset is incredibly empowering. When you realize that your reaction is within your control, you become more resilient to external challenges. Think of a time when you faced a difficult social situation. Maybe you felt rejected or judged. How did you respond? Did you let it affect your confidence? Now imagine facing that same situation with a stoic mindset. Instead of taking it personally, you remind yourself that other people's opinions are outside your control. What matters is how you choose to respond. Curious about how developing resilience can change your approach to social anxiety? Try applying stoic wisdom to your next social challenge and see how it strengthens your ability to cope. Number 10. Applying Stoic Philosophy to Daily Life Finally, how can you take all of these Stoic principles and apply them to your everyday life? Stoicism isn't just a philosophy to think about, it's a practical guide for living. The principles of Stoicism can be applied to any situation, including social anxiety. One of the best ways to apply Stoicism is through daily reflection. Take time each day to reflect on how you handled social situations. Were you present in the moment? Did you act with virtue? Did you reflect objectively on your interactions? By incorporating these stoic practices into your daily life, you can gradually overcome social anxiety and build confidence. The next time you feel anxious in a social setting, remind yourself of the stoic principles you've learned. Focus on what's within your control, cultivate present moment awareness, and act with virtue. Over time, these practices will become second nature and you'll find that social anxiety no longer has the same hold on you. Incorporating stoicism into your daily life is a journey, but it's one that leads to greater resilience, confidence and inner peace. We've covered a lot of ground in this video, from stoic principles to practical steps for overcoming social anxiety. The key takeaway is this by focusing on what you can control, practicing mindfulness and embracing discomfort you can start to break free from the grip of social anxiety and face life with newfound confidence. But remember, it's all about consistency. These strategies require daily practice and a commitment to self-improvement. You've already taken the first step by making it this far. Drop a hundred in the comments if you've watched all the way to the end. This shows that you're part of the 0.01% who actually commit to their growth. If you're serious about transforming your life, make sure to subscribe to the channel and join our community. Together, we can continue exploring life-changing philosophies 
and push past the limits holding us back. See you in the next video.